Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here. Today, in this video, I've compiled all of my Halo Infinite feedback videos into one video. However, I've cut out feedback that 343 has already addressed. So everything here are things 343 hasn't addressed yet in Halo Infinite. I normally don't ask for anything in the beginning of videos as I normally save my e-begging at the end. The one thing I would ask of you guys is that if you find yourself agreeing with the things I've said in the past, then sharing this video around will help get the word out to other members in the Halo community and of course help a small and up and coming creator like me. There are definitely some things uh, I've said that people may not agree with, which of course if that's the case, voice your opinions down in the comments. Now with all that being said, hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to try and pinpoint issues and praise about the flight uh, I got invited to, which once again, big thanks for the invite 343. Overall I enjoyed my time with the flight and I can confidently say we got a good game coming out this year. <laughs> Next thing I want to talk about is the UI and all the things in the main menu screen. Overall, aside from uh, general bugs, it's fine. Some feedback I could give is that I think it'd be nice if I could see my credits and XP boosters in the main menu, just like Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Because in that game, when you're in the multiplayer menu, you can see your boosters whether they're active or not at the bottom of the multiplayer screen. Incre uh, I would also like to see an increase in responsiveness when switching between the play, customization, and shop area. Particularly the customization menu because the background took very long to load up and the UI and the customization menus are very buggy itself. Though I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of that already. Next up is customization. Overall it looks pretty good. Uh, but one thing I have to say is there better be more armor coatings than what was in this first flight because that's definitely not enough. I know this is just a test, uh, tech test and not everything may not be here, but I'm still gonna mention it nonetheless. We need more basic armor coatings at launch. Some examples I can give is maybe like, for example, red, maybe maybe give us a red, a red and white or a red and black, you know, and vice versa, <laughs> maybe like a black and red, a white and red, you know, variants of the colors that, that you've given us. Um, because I've already seen like, when, when going into games, I've already seen like, people with the same armor coatings and a little distracting to me personally is just like hey that's my armor coating you know something like that um, a couple of nitpicks for me while we're on the topic of customization is when adding a prosthetic hand the armor piece on your hand is gone while in reach when you when you put on the robot arm in reach uh, the armor piece stays uh, it's just a small little nitpick like the when you switch to the robot arm in reach the armor piece on, on top of your hand and uh, your shoulder piece stays but it's just a small little nitpick. pick. I just like to see the little armor piece on your hand uh, return, especially since now we can customize our gloves. So yeah, just a small little nitpick for me. Also, I know you guys mentioned this on Twitter, but please let us uh, cross like certain armor pieces with different armor cores. Maybe, maybe you can let us try that in the next flight. Like I want to use Emil's helmet, but I don't want to use the Mark 5B just to use Emil's helmet, you know? Because I want to use a meal summon with the Mark 7 armor core, because I really like the Mark 7 armor core. I think it looks really cool. Another thing I like to say uh, in the customization menu is I think it's cool that we we now have AIs, but uh, I'd also like the option to actually completely remove the AI. Like, what if I don't want an AI, you know? Because, you know, some people, I, I've seen people say, like, they don't need someone holding their hand or, like, you know, anything like that. But just food for thought. So that's that's my take on the customization. Overall, uh, uh, you know, I like it. Now, I also like that there's very little aim assist and very little shot magnetism. I've never had a feeling of my shots curving to my opponents, or if I if I miss a shot, I'm gonna know that I missed a shot, and I really like that. So try and keep that. That's really good. Three four three. Next, let's talk about the HUD. So about the new HUD change, which Halo hasn't really have you know changed its HUD for years since 2007 with Halo 3. Now I know why they changed it the way it did with the way it is but I gotta say I still prefer the old HUD we've been playing with for years. My first problem is that all the shit that's at the bottom right of the screen is too small. Granted I could probably change the size myself in the settings but I'm going to mention it anyways. I have a similar problem with the equipment slot because once again it's too small and I even forget sometimes that I even have an equipment. Uh, there were times where I went to pick up uh, an OS or a camo and I was like, why wasn't I picking it up? And then I was like, oh, I have a drop wall in my inventory and I forgot I even had it. So I, he, he, I had to swap out the drop wall to pick up the OS and then I had to pick back up the drop wall. It's day! 
to this day. To this day. Uh, though a small nitpick from me is that the sound when you're close to running out of shields is different, and I prefer the old one, but uh, that's no big deal. Overall, I'd really like the classic HUD option when the game releases, because in previous games, when you pick up an equipment or an armor ability, it was obvious where to find them. I don't know, things worked fine with the, with the HUD we've had for years. 343, can you please just give us the classic HUD back? As an option? Kate, thanks. Next thing I want to talk about is Jeff Steitzer and the medals. My only nitpicks are really that I've noticed I've noticed that the, the Killjoy medal is back, but Jeff doesn't say Killjoy, because in Halo 3 and Reach he says Killjoy, so I'd like to hear him say that again. It's been so long since I've heard him say it, and Killjoy was completely absent from Halo 5. Even Halo 4 had it. The colors need to be more recognizable to how they were back in Halo 3 and Reach. I've noticed some have been reverted back to, like, Halo 2, and, like, I think that's really cool. But the point is to make them uh, bigger and revert them back to classic colors. Because whenever I think about medals, you know, I always think about how they look in Halo 3 and Halo Reach. I don't even remember how they look in, you know, in Halo Infinite or 4 and 5. I always think of, like, what? In Halo 4 and 5, they were all blue, and I think, what, in Infinite, they're all red or something? So, yeah, j just, you know, I, I like the classic colors. They, they worked, and they're always the ones I, I, I look back on. But uh, yeah, that, that's my that's my take on the medals and Jeff. Next, let's talk about the friend or foe system. Remember how I said the red outlines on my opponents didn't really bother me? Well, when 343 turned PvP on for two hours, I feel that it now started to matter because there were a couple instances where I was looking around and one guy came out of a doorway and the red outline caught my attention. Or even vice versa, I had no shields and I was trying to hide and recover my shields and I died and I can't help but wonder if my opponent saw me because of the outline or my shield effects uh, gave me away. So just some food for thought there. Personally, if I may make a suggestion, maybe uh, have the like have my teammates keep the blue outlines, but also have the the arrow and their name just like you know previous games. And then for my opponents, maybe don't have anything. Literally just a red name and the red reticle. So maybe that's how I would personally do it. I don't know if maybe you can add that in the options section, but uh, that's my that's my take on that. So let's start with the melee. All in all, I don't really have an issue with it. So far it seems to have the god range of Halo 5 that everyone seems to mention, but I think the magnetism of the melee feels a lot less compared to Halo 5. I feel like I am missing a couple of my melees here and there, but there could that could be the fact that uh, there is no player collision. Which I think we need player collision considering that uh, what I just said, and some creative things are lost without player collision, such as boost jumping. Maybe the melee's range could be decreased, but not too drastic. I'm talking like 20 millimeters or something. Next, let's talk about sprint. A heated topic that has plagued Halo for years now. So far from what I've played in the first flight, it seems fine and it seems negligible. Someone in the community did the math, and according to that person, the difference between base movement speed and sprint speed is around 8 point something percent, which is probably the slowest sprint speed we've had in the series. So, it really begs the question if it's really worth having in the first place. It's like sprint, slide, and clamber are only here at this point just to please the people who like those mechanics and for those out people outside the Halo community. I could make the argument where we might as well turn off sprint and just increase the base movement speed by 10%, which would be more than the sprint speed itself, and call it a day. But I also could see people make the argument saying, well, at the point of sprint is to slide. And it's like, okay, how much merit does that hold? Because to me, sliding is whatever and it's just cool to do. Then later during the flight, uh, during the first flight, started uh, people started finding techniques utilizing the slide. And I was like, Okay, maybe we should keep the sprint and see how this sliding meta evolves. Alright guys, so those are my quick thoughts on Halo Infinite's overall movement and melee. Like I said, I'd, prob I'd probably prefer removing sprint and just increase the base movement speed by 10%. But I am willing to keep sprint just to see how the sliding meta evolves. Who knows, maybe some longtime pros could try no sprint in their competitive settings and there wouldn't be a need for a radar either because there shouldn't be a radar in competitive settings in the first place anyways. And today I want to give my thoughts on the Halo Infinite Flight 2 tech test. So let's waste no time and get straight into this. The UI overhaul performed much better compared to the first flight, and the settings were actually working on my end at least. I really only noticed a small visual bug when going into the armor hall menu, and I'm not sure 
if 343 did this on purpose, but the colors for the AI are extremely different. I don't like the color change because I had my AI red, but it's orange now. So I'd like the colors to be reverted back to the way they were in Flight 1. As far as maps goes, I ha I'm a bit mixed still, and I think Bizarre was probably the weakest arena map. A few suggestions that I can give is, is that maybe swap the rocket and camel spawn on Bizarre. That way the rockets will be in a much more riskier position and might encourage players to come out more. Live fire is probably the most balanced so far in my opinion, so I don't really have much to say on that map. Behemoth. Now I'm probably gonna be in the minority here, but I didn't really enjoy my time on that map. There are way too many power weapons on the map, and a warthog doesn't work in a 4v4 setting. I think the sniper slash skewers should spawn at the bases because once one team has control over a sniper, I feel it's hard for the other team to get to the other sniper. This map really shows off how butt fucking useless you are when you don't have a rifle in your hands. The sidekick really needs a buff. I'll go over weapons and equipment in a different video, but I felt I couldn't do anything once one team has control of a sniper and shock rifle. I could, I would replace the hog on the map with maybe another ghost. And that's really all I have to say on Behemoth. And today I'm going to give my opinions on Halo Infinite's BTB. Now I know I'm late to this topic and everyone else has already given their opinions on this mode, but I haven't done it on my channel so here it is. Now as far as how uh, game modes play on this map, Slayer was definitely the weakest in terms of like game modes that, that play on this map. I feel like the only piece of uh, feedback I can give to make it play better, as far as Slayer goes, is right now the kill count, or like the the max amount of kills that to win is still 100 kills, much like you would expect in BTB. But remember, we have tw it's 12v12 now, it's no longer 8v8. So maybe the Slayer count should be increased to 150 kills to, uh, to win, because sometimes these matches can get... Uh, I had a few matches where uh, they ended pretty quick because it was only 100 kills. So maybe increasing the uh, kill count or whatever to 150 should uh, help matches not end too quick. Now as much fun as I had playing this, not everything is perfect. And there are some criticisms and pieces of feedback I'd like to give. Starting off with the vehicles. Now I did do a separate video talking about the vehicles themselves, which I'll link down in the description. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. What I am going to talk about is how they spawn on the map. So some basic vehicles still spawn on the map on each base like you'd expect. However, there's a cool, uh, I guess, sort of cinematic campaign-ish feature where it's like during mid-game or yeah, around mid-game and end-game, you'll have pelican drops dropping like super vehicles or like power vehicles that you could say. Uh, like a scorpion tank, a wasp, and a banshee. But however, my issue with this, even though it's a great idea, is that the these pelicans can sometimes drop basic uh, basic vehicle like a ghost, which I disagree with this. I think basic vehicles should spawn at each base, such as a ghost, mongoose, gun goose, uh, warthog, uh, even a chopper. Like basic vehicles should be spawning on the bases, but maybe power vehicles like in this. Uh, in this, in these games we were playing, they had Banshee, Wasp, uh, Scorpion, Wraith. Maybe those should be like Pelican drops, but nothing, but not basic vehicles like Mongoose, Chopper, none of those. Those should be at the bases. The next small thing I want to mention are the mounted machine gun turrets that are on each side of the uh, of the bases, which I don't think a lot of people messed around with since they're kind of like around the sides and not really much in the middle. But the only thing I want to say about them is I think their damage output and accuracy seems pretty pretty good. I wouldn't change it. However, I think at this point with Halo, I think I want the machine gun turrets to not have a movement speed penalty anymore. Considering, you know, in this game we have sprint, slide, clamber, and as well as other movement options like the uh, grapple shot and repulsor. So I think for the machine gun turret, I think it's it's that time. It's about time to remove that movement penalty and just make the movement literally the same as if you were walking. Now the last topic I want to tackle, and I saved this one for last on purpose, is the fact that BTB is now AR and sidekick starts and not, you know, AR and BR starts or, you know, AR and a rifle start. Now this topic pretty much has a split uh, opinions on in the Halo community, so I'm not sure. Like even I'm kind of on the fence. Like there's I've I've seen some arguments or decent arguments and for AR and sidekick starts to to stay in BTB, 
But I've also seen some arguments, you know, maybe it should change. We should try AR and BR starts for BTB. I'm honestly unsure what, what to say. I mean, uh, on one hand, for, for people saying to keep AR and sidekick starts, their argument is basically, well, there's plenty of rifles on the map. And they are pretty much right. I mean, the rifles spawn pretty frequently here. I think there's like a total of 20 rifles around, around the map. So uh, I guess that's a pretty decent case for AR and sidekick starts to stay. However, on the other hand, it is kind of a bit annoying to spawn and then just pick up a rifle and then you can go. It's just tedious. And especially like uh, during me playing BTB, there's, there's just so many weapons on the ground. It's just like, it kind of gets annoying just spawning and then going up to a rack. And then there's there are some moments where sometimes that the BR commando isn't spawned in time. So it's just like, you just gotta move on. The sidekick isn't viable enough to compete against other rifles at the moment. This is a problem even in the arena environment. One thing I will say is that if you look at Halo's past, like let's look at back at CE, there was only AR and pistol starts. But really, if, if you look at the weapons functionally, the assault rifle in Halo CE was really a submachine gun at the end of the day. And the pistol was kind of, even though it looked like a pistol, you could argue that it was also a rifle at the same time because that thing was just so goddamn good. So playing BTB in Halo CE was wasn't really a problem. The pistol was just was just so good. It was just so good, man. And then when you go to when you look at Halo 2, SMG and Magnum starts like in arena works. It doesn't really work because the problem isn't the SMG in Halo 2. The problem is the Magnum. The Magnum is weak as balls in Halo 2. So they basically have to replace the Magnum and, and just have BR and SMG starts for like the whole game. So like SMG and Magnum starts would not work in the BTB environment of Halo 2 because the Magnum is just so goddamn weak. So Halo 2 had BR and SMG starts throughout basically the entire game, if I can remember. And then with Halo 3, while the AR and Magnum, I'd say worked all right in the arena, I can't say the same in the BTB because the Magnum only had eight shots and not to mention Halo 3 was uh, projectiles was pretty slow so what there had to be AR and BR starts in Halo 3 and that worked pretty fine in BTB and in the arena as well in Halo Reach BTB let's say if they did if we did try AR and Magnum starts which I think you can't play in BTB but however the AR while well, the damage output was slightly nerfed, and the ink and the uh, accuracy was slightly increased. The Magnum, while still basically functionally like Halo 3's, but with a faster rate of fire, the accuracy is inconsistent. So, an AR and Magnum starts in Reach wouldn't work just because the Magnum is not consistent enough to be a viable weapon against rifles. So, look, just looking at the history of BTB, rifles have always worked. So. Uh, I'd still like to try AR and BR starts in Infinite BTB uh, at the end of the day. And I think that's pretty much all I want to say about Infinite BTB so far. Uh, overall, I had a lot of fun, and like I said, I think I'm leaning more towards AR and BR starts now that I've kind of laid that out. So that's pretty much it. I'm rather, I'm just going to throw my opinions out there on the competitive settings of Halo Infinite and, you know, what I think about them. So with that being said, let's just get into this. Speaking of the battle rifle, there's a couple things I'd like to note during this gameplay. Another thing I'd like to point out about the battle rifle at the beginning of this game is that you start off with max ammo, or at least what it normally is max ammo, compared to like, you know, literally every other like Halo game. Yeah, you start out with 108 rounds, which is the max ammo of the battle rifle. However, um, not only that, you can see L-Town, um, he can carry like 200 plus rounds, which it, the battle rifle's never held that many ammo, how much, Never has never held that much ammo before. Jesus, English is hard sometimes. This is not a huge deal per se, but you know, I'd rather have it, you know, just uh, you only have like two spare uh, mags when you spawn with a battle rifle and then you have to pick up the rest. And, and I'm not sure how carrying over max ammo that the battle rifle usually carries is going to play out, but again, I'm pretty sure it's not a big deal. It's just something I've noticed. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the grenades. So grenade hit markers are turned off for competitive play. Now personally, I would probably have hit markers overall like completely like removed from Halo Infinite. Like especially how the shields work where you definitely like glow a lot more in this game. And especially 343 innovated pretty well with the shields where wherever you shoot at, you know, at the opponent, 
their shields will glow wherever you shot. So I would almost argue to remove hit markers entirely and not just, you know, grenade hit markers turn off just specifically for competitive play. But that's just me and I'm happy that grenade hit markers are turned off for competitive play. The next thing 343 confirmed is that friendly fire is turned on. Which is a weird thing to confirm because friendly fire has always been, well, usually on in, in Halo games. But as we played in the technical test, that friendly fire is turned off. And not only that, we, we, we're still kind of lacking player collision, which is, I don't know, it's just weird. I, I think a create, I mentioned this in one of my videos once where I think the lack of player collision could create some maybe melee inconsistencies. But, you know, just, just food for thought. I really want player collisions back. It's just so weird just walking through your opponents or walking even through your teammates or you probably could create some unintended gameplay moments or whatever in, during uh, matches. They probably have friendly fire turned off just to cater to the people new, the people who are new coming to the game and as well as maybe, I don't know, maybe to prove 343 right or like kind of like a safety net considering uh, there's no more red versus blue. We have armor conings now and everybody has their own different colors So they probably want to play it safe at launch. Hopefully maybe post launch we can have friendly fire turned on back like entirely as like standard and th The importance of friendly fire turned on is that especially the perfect example is throwing grenades or using any type of explosives If you're firing it at a hallway or something or and your teammates are nearby you got to think twice, you know, like do you shoot the rocket and kill your teammate and the opponent, or do you wait for your teammate to get out of the way and then shoot the rocket, you know? That kind of thought. It's not literally for griefing unless you're just an asshole. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Um, I guess one thing I want to mention that that uh, wasn't confirmed is that I kind of want to try sidekicks as secondaries. Now, I know why they didn't they didn't have, like, secondaries for, for the BR, and that's because th basically they want to just encourage just weapon pickups and whatnot to to place in your secondary and I'd argue that I think you can still pretty much apply that with the sidekick as a secondary because a good example is well the sidekick isn't necessarily like a bad secondary they're probably better secondaries like the the mangler for example like that you see L Town picks up that, that's probably a better like hand cannon or even a utility weapon like the plasma pistol or disruptor which are kind of like EMP weapons like EMP handguns you know, those might complement your battle rifle. You know, just small things like that. But that's pretty much the only thing I'd uh, I'd like to try out maybe later, uh, post launch of uh, Halo Infinite's uh, competitive play. I just I want to try sidekicks as secondaries and see how it plays out. Well, that's all of my feedback that 343 hasn't gone around to addressing yet. Also, one thing I've noticed throughout the Flight One gameplay is that one, you could actually see your feet in first person if you had a higher FOV. And there was Red Reticle. I'm still dumbfounded that PC doesn't have Red Reticle because Splitgate has had Red Reticle and that game is both on PC and console. While this video is done, I still have another video voicing my feedback on Halo Infinite's weapon sandbox, which if you haven't seen that yet, I'll leave a link down in the description. Now I have to admit that the video is a little outdated on some weapons and like only small adjustments have been made, but that's the thing. The adjustments have been very minor, and the overall meta hasn't changed really, so I still do recommend watching it. Some very quick feedback I can give on some of the weapons right now is the Assault Rifle just needs a headshot multiplier nerf from 15 shots up to 16 or 18 shots required for the head. The Battle Rifle needs its cone angle reverted back to the flights. Also make it a 3 burst melee kill across the board so players don't have to be separated between standard and competitive settings. The melee nerf that came with Season 2 was unnecessary as competitive players were only complaining about the Mangler, and on top of that, the universal melee nerf very slightly hurt other weapons CQC capabilities. Speaking of the Mangler, 343, you just have to bump it up from Tier 1 to Tier 2. On top of that, further nerf its reserve ammo along with the return of its one-shot beatdown, considering, like I said, the universal melee nerf was uncalled for. Trust me 343, do all of this, uh, what I just said, and competitive players will complain a lot less and they will no longer GA it, as only one player will be able to wield it, just like the Bulldog in Heatwave. The Commando takes way too many shots to the body. Right now it's 13, that body shot count should be brought down to 10, just like the flights. Lastly, the sidekick body shot count is 10, bring that back down to 9, 
just like the flights. The fact that I can go back to my old feedback videos I made during the flight test shows the game hasn't really changed much since launch. If I start to see significant weapon balance adjustments that I just suggested and more, maybe I'll make another weapon analysis video or feedback video because the last two videos took a lot of time to work on and I'm not going to make another one until I start seeing the right action being done by 343 Sandbox team. Some of my concerns and really other people's concerns that we've mentioned came true. For example, when I said no player collision could cause weird melee inconsistencies or interactions, that pretty much came true. Season 1 melee interactions were busted, players were literally phasing through each other. It was so bad. And both shot and melee registrations are still bad! Some weapons got easier to use when the game came out, in which some guns listed weren't necessary, especially the BR, which was already the most consistent gun back during the flights. Look, I'm done playing Halo Infinite, in fact I've uninstalled it on both my PC and Xbox One X. Alright, I've already waited for content to come to Halo 5 for a year. I'm not waiting for content to come to Halo Infinite because I already went through that with the last game. Now depending on what I feel like uploading regarding Halo, I'm going to figure out what content I want to make on MCC. Anyways, I should end this video here as this is getting too long and if you watched this far, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. And thank you to those who watched my Barrel Trauma video. I think that was like my fastest growing video on my, on my channel so far. So. Hopefully I can make more, and I have a lot of fun playing that game, and my friends and I are certainly not done with it yet. 343, and more in particular Joe Staten. If this video somehow reached you, know that I am a longtime Halo fan, I started following this franchise back in Halo 3, and if anyone can turn Halo Infinite around and pull off the impossible, it's you Joe. I wish you and the rest of 343 good luck. I hope to see Halo back in the top 5 most played games in the world, and until next time, Peace.